Okay, uh, well, now you're going to see how to remove this bearing. The last uh, video I put up showed you how to install it. Um, when you're installing these gears, um, there's a shim that goes underneath this bearing. I did install the shims. They're just the wrong thickness. So now I'm going to take this bearing off again uh, to uh, change the shim out. Uh, but I don't exactly have the right tool. I have this kit here that I got from Princess Auto. As you can tell, it doesn't go under the bearing like it should. If I, if I tried to pull the bearing right now as is, um, it would rip this cage off and this bearing would be ruined. So I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, use a trick someone showed me. And you can see, you see right there, um, that's the shim. There's sort of shiny part in there, right there. Um, so I gotta get that out. My puller doesn't really do the job, but it can if I can, if I can make some space in there. So what I'm gonna do is put a, uh, a two by four on the floor, Put the bearing or put this gear on it and then take a chisel and put it right in there and give it a couple good strikes and it'll move this bearing out a little bit and it'll be just enough that I can get you can see these uh, have been have been in there before so it doesn't like I said it's not exactly the right way to do it but I'm just making do with what I got so once I make that space this puller will go in there just enough and I'll be able to pull that bearing off. So stay tuned, see how it goes. Okay, so um, I did it. Um, it may not really, may not be easy to tell in the video, but there is more space there. So <clears throat> I'm hoping that this puller now, now has enough space to get in there in behind the bearing and put all the pressure on the inner, the inner race of the bearing, which is right there, versus the outer race. If I put any pressure on this at all, it's going to bend this cage and it'll be ruined. So um, I'll get it all set up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is all set up. Um, <clears throat> uh, as you can see, um, what's important when you have a setup like this is that this bearing you still rotate. If you can't rotate this bearing, that means this puller is putting force on that. And you're gonna bend this cage and ruin this bearing if you pull it. If this doesn't, if this doesn't rotate freely, that's what's gonna happen. So, um, this is just a cheap kit I bought from uh, Princess Auto here in Canada. If you're in the US, probably uh, Harbor Freight, I imagine, would sell you something very similar. Um, this just will this just barely does it, but like I said, I don't really have the right tool So I'm just gonna make it work anyways. I pulled it off yesterday, so I know it'll work um, What I didn't show you just cuz I can't hold the camera and work on this too, but um, You can see there's not even much engagement on the nuts, but I've been working it in uh, I've been tightening those in a little bit and it's actually moving the it's actually pulling the bearing just doing that so I think I'm going to work that in a little bit more and then I'm just going to take a wrench, put it up here, turn up, probably set up my vise or whatever and um, pull this bearing off. All right, see what happens. All right, this is how I got to set up in the vise. Um, I just uh, I just clamped on this upright piece into the vise. Got a three quarter inch wrench. I've already tried this a couple times and it works. You probably can't tell, but it is moving the bearing off as I turn. Um, always check to make sure you can still rotate your bearing. You can do that. You know it's not it's not uh, being um, it's not having force put on it by the puller. So this bearing's gonna come off here without much trouble, and uh, we'll get that shim out. And then I got to do that whole other procedure over again where. I, Put the gear in the freezer, the bearing in the oven, all that stuff. So um, we'll uh, we'll get this off and uh, we'll see uh, see how how everything works. Well, there you have it. Bearings off. 
uh, came off with no problem at all. Um, here's the shims I was talking about. There's two here. I'm gonna have to measure them. I think I'm just gonna take the probably the thinnest of the two. I don't know. The problem uh, the problem is, and I haven't found it anywhere uh, for any recommendation or guideline on how much bearing to uh, or how much shim to take out. Um, because there's no real measurement I could take to show how far in the the um, pinion is. All you really do is just put some marking compound on the gears and rotate it around. And depending on the on the orientation of this gear to the ring gear, gives your contact pattern. So the way my contact pattern looked, it's it uh, said you have to take out some shim. It just isn't going to tell you how much. It's just a trial and error thing. So I might have to do this another two or three times. Hopefully I don't. Um, I think I'm just going to, uh, like I said, just take out the thinnest shim that I have here. Maybe they're both the same. And uh, put it back together and see what happens. There's typically only one one uh, shim underneath these uh, bearings anyways. But maybe the last gear set I put in the car might have had to, might have had to add another shim. So, anyways, we'll see what happens. All right, back again. Um, I did a little research, a little reading, a little googling. Um, I measured the shims I have, so I've got thirty-three thousandths of an inch. Uh, I did some reading, and seems like Ford typically th puts like a thirty thou. A 28 to 30 thou shim underneath the bearing. I had dug through my stash of shims and I have this one and it measures 28 and it looks used like like I might have ran a stone over it at some point so it's making me think that maybe when I had the other gear set in this car the original 355 ratio in this car Maybe it had this shim, and then I had to go to these ones to get the contact pattern correct. So, taking a chance, I'm putting that 28 in. And uh, so now I gotta do the whole freezer, put the gear in the freezer, put the bearing in the oven, um, and it's lunch time. So, I'm gonna go to lunch. Maybe this stuff will cool off and heat up. And by the time we get back from lunch, and uh, I can get this back on. It'd be nice to get this job done today. Okay, bye.